Here we go with the Bruins and Canadians on this Wednesday night in Boston. Your starting goaltenders in net for Montreal. Carey Price is 16-6-4 with a 2.28 goals against average and a 9-13 save percentage. He's 9-2-1 on the road this year with a 9-33. I spend most of my nights on the backyard rink. But I used to talk about slap shots, wristers, that sprawling save, the clink of rubber on steel. These days, the vocabulary is changing. I use words like patching, icing, flooding. I'm out here so often, I know it takes 2 minutes and 35 seconds to fill this bucket. That's because sometimes, it's too cold to wait outside as the water rises to the brim. You go indoors, your toes still tingling your eyes on your watch. On those really cold nights, you're reminded you have hairs in your nostrils, so cold you slur your words and your fingers burn. Really cold nights, those words are beginning to leave my vocabulary too. Winters in Montreal feel warmer. That's why I'm out here working all the time, sometimes till 3, 4 in the morning, undoing damage caused by rain and a hot sun. Lately, I've been wondering if it's worth it. I've been making a rink for close to 10 years now. Something tells me the hockey season was longer when I first started. I just can't seem to remember. My dad's inside with two of his sisters right now. They're always reminiscing about Forty Carlton, their childhood home in DDO. In the 70s, they built a backyard rink where they played with friends and neighbors. I'm hoping they can tell me what winter was like back then. We're underway as Plakenitz won the drop. Back for Markov at his own line, played to the Boston zone. Chara broke it up, and he'll hand it off here. Dougie Hamilton, up for Horton through center, trying to connect for Krejci. I remember just that it looking so shiny when you just finished the rink. Mm. Like, it just looked so smooth. But I was, yeah, it's I was almost, pretty... It was like you didn't want to skating on it. I it was, was pretty so, obsessed. It was I was so pretty, pretty obsessed. You know? I don't think yeah, too many people know. made I don't rinks know. in their backyard. No, no I don't think so. Even though we had, even though winter was, I mean, that was yeah. what we yeah. had, winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were real winter. winter. Yeah. It's not like the puny No, no, that now. was, they were cold. My feet were like ice. Uh, and we used to skate at the, we used to skate at the park. And we'd play ringette or we'd play hockey and it was outdoor. And it was free. Uh, and you'd be so wrapped up you could barely move because you had so much clothing on. Yeah. Did we have ice by Christmas? Can anybody remember? I think we did. I think you're probably right, but I just can't remember. I can't picture probably mid I can't picture coming in from the rink and sitting around the Christmas tree. I don't have that memory. No, me either. Like me, my aunts and my father are having trouble remembering. Luckily, I came across Lawrence Mysick, an expert on climate research. Mysick, in fact, believes winters were both colder and longer in the past. He warns that the future of the outdoor rink is, well, on thin ice. What does that mean then? What are we looking at uh, for the, the future? The backyard rinks are gone. I think they're going to be history. Uh, but it's like the horse and uh, buggy, you know, they're going to be gone. They're going to be history. We've predicted, I think, that certainly by the mid-century, 2050, um, you know, this outdoor rinks will be gone. Mysick is confirming my suspicion that this year's mild winter and short skating season are signs of a change in climate and of things to come. But I need to see if other rink makers in the city are having similar difficulties. That's why I'm here shoveling snow at a municipal rink in Verdun. I'm meeting Peter Wheeland, a man whose rink in Saint Lazare inspired my father and me to improve ours. Peter gave us rink making tips almost a decade ago when we were still amateurs. His rink was massive, as wide as ours is long. If there's anyone who felt the impact of a change in climate, this is the guy. Towards the end, it started being later and later before we could actually go out and skate on the ice. And I think that pattern definitely continued this year because January was quite warm for a while. Peter hasn't made a rink since moving to Verdun two years ago. He misses it, but admits he's relieved. He remembers how increasingly difficult it was to deal with erratic temperatures. I used to call myself an ice farmer because I was constantly uh, checking the, the, uh, the, weather, uh, the weather sites to find out what temperature it was going to be, whether there was going to be any snow. Uh, and I never understood before, my, my girlfriend at the time, her brother was a farmer, and I never understood why every time you had a conversation with him, he was, ask, he was talking about the weather. Uh, I thought it was like he just couldn't come up with any of the conversations, but the fact is, it, it, the weather is just critical to what he does. And when you're building a rink, the weather is critical to what you do. And uh, it's going to dictate whether you're going to go out and have a great day skating or whether you're going to be 
uh, outside shoveling for 12 hours. <laughs> Ice farming. I like the term. It implies hard work, dedication, complete subjection to the unyielding forces of nature. Forty years ago, Tony Secarecha was an ice farmer. His brothers were much older than him, and they played hockey at Jerry Park. Left out, Tony built a rink in his backyard to learn the sport. His goal was to get good enough to join them at the municipal rink. I'd go out 9, 10, 11 times per day. You'd go out half an hour, go back in, go back out, go back in. Our feet used to freeze to the point of who knows how close we got to frostbite. Uh, icicles on mustaches and just pain, sheer pain. But we just played through it anyway. You know, when the game was over, then we went to rub our feet. But for sure, it's not like today. Today, you know, every week or so, the ice is melted. You know, it's not really doable today, I would say. These days, Tony only plays in arenas. He doesn't have to worry about cracks in the ice, snowstorms, or a change in climate. He does have one fond memory of the backyard rink, though. It was freestyle, you know, much more creative and um, just a little more free spirit, less organized. Organized and expensive, hockey is becoming an elite indoor sport. That would only be exacerbated by the demise of the outdoor rink. And as I watch old hockey footage, I know what the implications of that could be. Dickie Moore goes end to end in a dazzling rush. A pass to Dickie Moore using Joffrey on it, the screen and third. Two Art Ross trophies, six Stanley Cups, an NHL scoring record, a retired number 12, a place in the Hockey Hall of Fame, a 17-year professional ice hockey career, and it all began on his backyard rink in Park X. Is it possible you wouldn't have even learned how to skate if you didn't have that rink? Oh, no, we never. My brothers used to help me skate. Uh, Tommy was a great skater. He, played, he, he was in the Air Force and he used to teach me to skate. He was very good. Throw me in a snowbank and say, now come back and skate. <laughs> Do you have a, an oldest hockey memory? Do you remember lacing no, up this? I can't remember yesterday. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm not a young guy. I'm too old to remember back then, you know? Do you, do you know when the, the first time you laced up the skates was? No. no? So, I think it's five or six years old, seven years old. Did you, did you have a backyard rink? Was it? Yeah, we it, built our own rink beside our house, yeah, on Bloomfield and Southern near Sun Rock. Do you think you would have played at the level you played at if it weren't for the backyard rink? No, I never would have gotten known, never got a chance. If losing the backyard rink means losing a player like Dickie Moore, what does that mean for the sport and the country? Why is hockey so important? I'm hoping Roy McGregor, an expert on everything hockey and everything Canadian, can give me some answers. If you want to know a country and you want to know people, you have to know the game they play too, or the games they play. It cuts across all of our bad barriers. French English, North South, rural city, rich poor, BC to Newfoundland. And so that when you have uh, Sidney Crosby, the kid from Coal Harbor, Nova Scotia, taking a pass from Edmonton's Jerome McGinley and firing a puck that really wasn't much of a goal that was a weak shot. <laughs> it was a bad shot, badly played by Ryan Miller, the goalie. But it's the golden goal. Because, going right back to how we began this conversation, we have a face that the world recognizes, and that face is under a hockey helmet. And in Canada's case, there could be no other game. Uh, this game was created by our landscape and created by our weather situation. And it's played in such a way that it has to be played. Because if Canada had decided instead it wanted to play baseball, everybody would have froze to death standing on second. Nothing else but hockey would really work in a, in a frozen world like we had. Back home on my rink, my vocabulary has reverted back to the original, at least for one night. On evenings like these, I forget about the hours agonizing over every crevice, every bump, the gallons and gallons of water dumped on the rink. It all becomes worth it when a group of friends put down their phones and their games, take time off school and work, and lace up their skates to chase a puck around with a stick. I forget about the change in climate, 
and that this is probably the last night cold enough to skate. Instead, I focus on something Roy McGregor told me that I don't think I'll ever forget. The beauty of hockey, what really makes hockey so special, is that no one invented it. In fact, I say it's invented every time a puck or a tennis ball drops, wherever it may drop, whether that's a driveway, uh, Maple Leaf Gardens, or, or the Air Canada Centre, or in the basement, or in a motel hallway, whatever. It's just the most creative game of all. That's it! That's the game!